Hello, college algebra student. This is chapter six point seven, exponential and log models. So basically, this in this section we are solving work problems using what we have learned in six point six about solving equations. So um, it's divided into three parts. The first part is about log application, which is really short. Um, and then because the major thing is actually use log to solve exponential. And then we have exponential growth and exponential decay. Um, so log application first. So actually log is used to um, measure magnitude of earthquake. So describe how, how big an earthquake is. Because in an earthquake, it produces a lot of energy. So, but the energy numbers is hard to communicate in uh, to the public. So, they we use uh, some log values to communicate magnitude of the earthquake. Uh, in the old day, there is this richer scale, but richer scale is more um, accurate when you are measuring uh, small scales of earthquake. But for larger scale, um, the um, moment magnitude is a little better. So the one that we talk about is called the moment magnitude. Uh, it's also used in measure pH values of you know water as well as amplitude of sounds. So uh, in this particular way, in this particular case, we actually are looking at uh, using it to measure magnitude of an earthquake. So the uh, the way to calculate magnitude of an earthquake is given here is two over three times log. Oh, there's no base. That means space ten. Uh, e E is the energy of the earthquake. Uh, over E zero. E zero is the smallest energy released by an earthquake that can be detected by the um, machines that detect earthquake. I've forgotten what it is. Um, so we say if we know that the magnitude of the earthquake as some, uh, in San Francisco 1906 was five times 10 to the 16 joules of energies, then what is the magnitude? So basically, it's a plug-in because you have E0, you have E because this is the energy. This is the energy of the San Francisco 1906 earthquake. So what you do is you just I think I have some space here. There's not enough space. So you would say the uh, magnitude would equal to m equal to 2 over 3 log base 10 e. Oh gosh, what is it? <laughs> I forgot what it is. 5 times 10 to the 16. And that one is 10 to the 4.4. Not this one. So that particular energy is 5 times 10 to the 16. And E0, which is the lowest uh, earthquake, is 10 to the 4.4. So if you put this in the calculator, that should work. So, But I like to simplify this a little bit because it's the same base. So you can use the uh, exponent property to simplify as 5 times 10 to the 16 minus 4.4. Because you are dividing um, two base with the same Ex two exponent of the same base, you can subtract the exponent. 16 minus 4.4 .4 is 11.6. So put in the calculator that it is. That will give you the answer. So I'm going to uh, just use the uh, decimal calculator to show you. So you would uh, enter this like this. Um, 2 over 3. Log by times 10 to the power 11.6, uh, 8.199. So that means 8.2. So you say, oh, that is the earthquake magnitude is 8.2. Example two, uh, other than using it to measure those pH values, earthquake, um, you can actually, there is a, a social science use of it that calculate how fast people walk in a city based on the population. Everybody knows that if the population is large, it's a busy city, people walk faster. So uh, social science people has, or sociology people has come up with this formula that say 
the walking speed of um, of the cities can be is de dependent on the population in thousands. So if you do plug in the population in thousands into LN time 0.37 plus 0.05, this is outside. Then um, you can find the walking speed of those people living in that city. So for example, if we use that, find out what, what is the walking speed of San Francisco that, San Francisco that has a population of 3.314 uh, 3 million at year 2020. Um, so we would just plug this in right now. Instead of plugging 3,340,000 uh, into this, and notice that P is measured in thousand, so you would have to move the decimal place to the thousand place. So actually, P is three three one four. So W of three three one four. Just you just have to know that oh, this is measured in thousand, but this is the actual population, so you have to adjust it a little bit. Would you go to point three seven? LN of three three one four plus point oh five. So it's just a plug-in. Um, again, what I'm going to use the decimal to do. So change this. Uh, what point three seven ln um, three three one four right close plus zero point zero five. So it's three point zero four nine. So round it to one decimal place. That is um, equal to. Three feet per second. If we round to one to three point zero. So people walk three feet every second. So that's the log applications. The second part is exponential growth application. It is quite long, so um, we're gonna do it in this part part of it in this section and then part in the second one. Exponential growth applications. Um, just some concept first. Exponential growth is uh, for continuous growth. We can use the base e uh, model. So the application, the the model would be y equal to a zero. A zero is like the initial number among at time zeros. You can use small a also e to the kt, where k is the continuous growth rate. A zero is the initial amount, so we all we all know that you can do it this way if you know the growth rate. Um, but you can also use the uh, doubling time to uh, look at how people how a population grows also. So if we are to find doubling time, so let's solve how to how how long it would take say, uh, uh, something that is growing in the growth rate of k to double. So we would say double means two times of a zero, and then a zero e to the k times t, and t is what we want to find out. So if I divide by a zero, so it would be two equal to e of k t, right? And then if I add ln on both sides, I would ln ln e of k t. So kt can move out because it's in the exponent using log property. So ln2 would equal to kt times ln e, which is 1, right? This is 1. So if I want to find doubling time, this doubling time would be ln2 over k. So this is the formula that we have. If I want to know any time I know the growth rate, continuous growth rate, I can find how long it would take for that population or money or anything to grow to double. And because of that, uh, we can also write uh, the exponential function, not in, instead of just y equal to a zero e of kt, I can also write it as y equal to a zero here, u times two double, but then uh, I would have t over the doubling time. So two, two means is doubling times two, and then what time is it double? Is uh, the the big t is the doubling time. So if you have t here, well divided by t is one. So it would be two times of a. So we have two actually two formula that uh, 
um, model growth, exponential growth. One is this one, e to the kt, if you know the continuous growth rate. And if you know the doubling time, this is the model. Okay. So uh, when we solve growth applications, there is a few approach. The first is if you are to find a, if they don't tell you what initial one is, they must have to, they must tell you some, you know, X and Y number, or if you know your doubling time, then you, oh no. Um, if you know K, yeah, if you know K and time, you can find A by um, just substitute K and T, right? But use this and then substitute it. If the doubling time is known, you can find the future among A. I think I should say find Y. Y means A. You just plug in A0 and then 2 T over the big doubling time. And if you have to find A0, that means they tell you what the future would be, look like, but what was in the past, you would solve for, um, you plug in this K, and also your time, and then you can solve for A0. And to solve for K, if you have, to, you, if your unknown is K, you don't know what K is, you, then you can use doubling time to solve. LN2 over K is actually the doubling, is the, the, the half, the uh, doubling time. Um, or you, you can write the, uh, an, uh, uh, of, write an existing application where k is an unknown and you apply ln. Okay, so I think the best way to talk about all these approaches is to solve an a equation. So first of all, we know the initial population of a, a city is 23,000 and it's increasing with a continuous growth rate of 0.2%. Wow, now this is k, right? Look at this keyword, continuous growth rate. So this is K, so we change it into decimal 0 0.002. If you will move it uh, up for two. So I can, if I know K and I know the initial, this is A0, I can write the equation. The right equation, the equation would be Y equal to 23,000. E to the, is always K and T. K is already done, 0 0.002 and t. So anytime you plug in t, you know your your population. So this is the equation that would give you the population. B is when will the population double in size? So that means they're trying to find doubling time. So remember doubling time is ln2 over k. And k is 0 0.2, right? So this is ln2 over 0 0.002. Put in the calculator. Um, LN2 over 0 0.002. So it takes 346.6 years to double because it's increasing slowly. 346.6. This one. So you go to three, four, six point six. Okay. So um, I think I'm going to stop here. So you can see uh, if you know the continuous growth rate, you can write this out and you know a lot of stuff. And we'll continue with more applications.